a future quantum computer would be able to break current internet encryption. That means that anyone with that kind of a computer could hack into previous financial transactions, medical records, and national security secrets. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, is working on cryptography that can stand up to an attack by a quantum computer. Edward Parker is a physical scientist at RAND and studies quantum technology and cybersecurity. Edward, welcome to the program. Thank you, happy to be here. All right, explain what the big issue is here because we don't yet have quantum computers. That's correct. So as you mentioned, a new generation of computers are being developed by scientists and technologists called quantum computers. They'll be able to do several types of calculations that are far beyond the ability of our current supercomputers to achieve, things like scientific simulation, for example. But the most concerning of these, arguably, is that these new types of computers will be able to break virtually all of the encryption systems currently used to protect internet communications. So a bad actor which has a future quantum computer with very high capabilities could potentially read essentially everything over the internet, which would make the internet essentially useless for things like online commerce or sensitive communications, emails. All of those communications would be readable by someone with a quantum computer. Which is extremely scary, including for national security, because all that's encrypted as well. That is correct. So how far off are we from a quantum computer? No one really knows for sure. There are existing prototype quantum computers that are quite rudimentary, very far from being able to do this kind of code breaking. Uh, some of my colleagues at RAND did a study where they interviewed several experts and asked when quantum computers would become capable of breaking codes. There was a very wide range of estimates. The median, I believe, was around 2035. So this is probably something like 15 years out, but there's huge uncertainty in that estimate. Explain NIST's role then in protecting internet traffic right now and in the future. So NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, is a government agency which is in charge of establishing a variety of cybersecurity standards, protocols, procedures. And in terms of quantum, what they are doing is coming up with a defense or countermeasure against future quantum computers, which is called post-quantum cryptography, which means new encryption systems, new mathematical ways of encrypting information which are believed to be not vulnerable to a future quantum computer. So as long as we move our communications over to these new encryption systems, ideally and hopefully the quantum threat will be neutralized after we've done that. Okay, but not too long ago, one of those algorithms that NIST was considering got hacked. What happened? That's correct. So the way the process works is it's quite public. NIST solicited suggestions from the general public for new types of encryption, which would be immune to quantum computers. 69 different algorithms were proposed, and NIST has been gradually mathematically analyzing them and winnowing them down to a small number, which they think truly are really robust. They recently um, announced four different encryption algorithms, which they believed are safe. Those four are still all believed to be safe but they also announced four alternate algorithms, which they are considering adding in as additional options. And one of those four alternate algorithms has recently been cracked mathematically by a pair of academics in Belgium. They announced a, a mathematical process by which a standard computer, not even a quantum computer, but just an existing computer, could break this decryption very quickly and efficiently. So essentially it's, it's useless as an encryption measure which does not inspire confidence. That is true. I would, I would characterize it as concerning, but not disastrous. So again, there are multiple algorithms that have been selected. The four main candidates are still believed to all be secure. And of the four alternates, one of them has been shown to be vulnerable, but it is one of four and they are alternates. So you recommend opening up a public competition to search for vulnerabilities. Explain how that would work. It's not too different from the current system. The way the current system works is NIST is publicizing these mathematical algorithms and basically asking the general public to comment on their security or to find mathematical cracks which would break them. But there's no real concrete incentive to do so. Um, 
it's it's really just prestige and uh, you know general patriotism. I assume is incentivizing people and perhaps the promise of tenure and academic publications for the mathematicians who find these flaws. So in a recent uh, commentary, I suggested just adding in an additional financial incentive by having NIST just say, we'll offer a reward for anyone who can find Cold, any of these mathematical cash. flaws. Exactly. <laughs> and, and is it quite challenging, you know, as we wrap this up, to implement an encryption standard once it's adopted? Absolutely. It will be a very complicated, extremely logistically challenging and expensive transition because essentially every compu communication system connected to the internet today will need to upgrade its encryption. That will probably take many years. President Biden recently issued a national security memorandum ordering the federal government to begin that process. And the goal that President Biden said in that memorandum was, as much of the process should be complete as practical by 2035. So this will be a decades plus transition process. All right, Edward, thank you so much for coming in. Nice to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.